Yesterday, I sent a note of gratitude to strangers who have loved me and continue loving me. So what I choose to challenge today, and through and through for a while, I choose to challenge breast cancer. I choose to fight <laughs> breast cancer. So I want to tell you a beautiful, wonderful love story that is really joyous, that I was diagnosed with breast cancer. So I stand here today, this is my second week after surgery, second week, starting week three after surgery. And the reason why the powerful Femnet put this for me to wear, to say, hi, I love you, but please don't hug me, is because this side is still bandaged. So I know <laughs> that quite, quite a number, but I wanted to hug. Carol, do you know how much I want to hug you? But I wanted to hug. So the point that I want to speak today, and I want to speak it openly to the women, my sisters, my daughters, my mothers, is that point number one, all of us are at risk of breast cancer. You know why we are all high risk? My sisters, why are we all high risk? Why are we all high risk? Why are we all high risk? So my doctor, who's the best doctor you can ever ha have, sent me yesterday and told me as a, my mouthpiece, please be clear on how you articulate. I said, okay, Dr. Otieno, I will articulate. We are all high risk just by the simple fact that we are female. Because people speak about it like it is detached. We are all high risk by the simple fact that we are female. On another day, in a platform that Femnet, I am sure, will give me, we will go through the processes. But there are things I want to implant on you today, on International Women's Day. Ladies, do your breast check. We in the media normally draw pictures for you and tell you, lift your hand, press there, check there, press inside. Some of us do it without paying attention. My doctor tells me at least to do one critical breast check every month. One. And so I asked him, what do you mean one? He said, that one, that day you take 20 minutes. I'm not only talking to the ladies, to the men in the room who are our brothers, our husbands, our sons. You have women in your lives. How do you check? You have to check properly and see. But breast cancer is a very funny demon. Sometimes it manifests, sometimes it doesn't, okay? But it is in there. But also the news I want to bring to you women, my sisters, don't fear. I'm on week three after surgery. It, Madam, is it week three we are starting? Okay. You see, I work with calendars, I work with hands to squeeze, I work with KDF. My life is complete. Don't fear. One of the things that I hear or what, my, what I've discovered in the last two months which Daisy, I wanted to say in your presence, that breast cancer in the country is the number one cancer killer. Is the government making it a priority? No. Why? Because it's women. When we look at ourselves as women, we should know that the platform where we step is a platform where it is constantly fighting. Why do I say I have confirmed that? I had surgery in a very small institution of about 20 beds. But on bed three, on day three, they had already done four mastectomies. We were four in the world. One, two, three, four. Yes, by day three. This is a small institution. So this is not the big Kenyatta's, Nairobi Hospital, Mpisha. See, those are big. And these are not district hospitals where our women go. So what numbers are we talking about? So as a journalist, I, I approach them and ask them, ah, ah, but how many mastectomies do you do? And they told me, Mildred, sometimes in a week, we do even eight. Dr. Njoroge, do you believe? That's a small, I've told you, it's a small hospital with like 20 beds. It's not a big hospital. It's not a district hospital. So the point that I'm trying to bring out is that our women, we women, are suffering. That the number one cancer killer in the country is breast cancer, that it is not a priority. But what I also want to tell you, it can be managed. Do I look to you like a morning? Actually, I'm standing like this because I'm kind of pressed. You know I've stood here for like four months, four, four hours. Don't say after this, I run. So, 
The point that I want us, the stigma I want us to break, Lucian, is the fear of our women not to say, I got this thing. What is the stigma that we keep it off? I got sick, I announced it. One, because I needed support. It's an expensive disease, I need to raise funds. And I said it as it is. Two, because every day I realize it is such a stigma because women are calling me whispering. Guy Mildred, do you know even me last year? Guy Mildred, do you know why? But we have the answer. In our discussion with our doctor yesterday, the doctor said the social stigma associated with women's bodies keeps them from talking about breast cancer, talking about cervical. Oh, by the way, after, after breast cancer, the second one is cervical. All that is we? Women. And he said the stigma. And he gave us a very heartbreaking story of a woman who traveled all the way from Uganda for a whole year. Doctors are treating everything else. Headache, backache, toothache, what, chest, what. Nobody's touching the breast. When she came to Nairobi, it was a bit too late. But when she was talking to, the doctor, to my doctor, she said, you know, I've not told anybody there, but there's something in my breast. That was the problem for a whole year. But you see what delay does to cancer. That when you delay, it mutates. And as they're having discussion, she says, first of the doctors didn't ask, but we talked about our social stereotypes and stigmas that women, you, you're not supposed to say you have breasts. So <laughs> we are leaders and forward-moving women. I urge and I plead that on this day, on International Women's Day, our breasts are nothing to be ashamed of. Our cervix, nothing to be ashamed of. That if we are able to find a space to actually talk about breast cancer, we will talk about breast cancer. It's my first outing in two months. It's the first time I was telling memory I'm wearing heels and applying lipstick in two months. But if we keep quiet as women leaders, others are suffering. It's okay. You will touch your breast, you feel a lump. The doctor says it's not a diagnosis. A lump does not necessarily translate to cancer. It can be anything. But if you feel a lump, run, get it checked. Just get it checked. But another thing we say, get it checked. This thing can be managed. I stand in confidence because of the people who loved me and continue to love me. By force, by the way. There are others who love me by force. Even when I'm hiding in my house, they come by force. Even when I say I'm not talking to anybody, they come and sit there quietly and listen to me sleep. I've had people, my, Madam comes to sit at the corner to listen to me sleep. He said, yeah, I was just sitting there for an hour. I was listening to you sleep. That's the kind of love. That's why I asked from the start, who's squeezing your hand when you can't squeeze it yourself and you're in pain and you're in whatever. I am on a mission to talk about this thing. It's attacking women. I am also on a mission to look for who I call my, my one-breasted sisters. It's not a shaming for a woman to not have, I have one. There are those who don't have one. They don't have both. And that's okay. I am a bit careful because I'm in pain and I'm still plastered. I want to urge women that it's not our fault you were born a woman. It's not a mistake that you have breasts. It's not, not, absolutely not your fault if you're in a situation of breast cancer. Why are we not talking about it? Let's talk about it. Let's go for those tests. I want to drop the mic by once again appreciating Femnet. <laughs> So I am, I am an ex-Femnet, I'm told not to say ex, they will attack me with everything. So I am a Femnet member, proud Femnet staff, whether they like it or not, I'm not on their payroll though, but because Femnet love women, I love women, and Femnet, like I said at the beginning, they keep, you know, there are people who call you and say, hi, yeah, we know you're sick. Yeah, it's okay, we know you're sick, but you have to do this work because life has to go on. I love them. Yes. I absolutely love them. 
what I fear, Winnie, is the warrior stories. You know you have no time for warrior. Life is going on. My sisters, life goes on. You worry, of course there's worry. Oh, my children, yes, there's, there's worry. But Jane, the challenge I have gotten in the last two months, because I'm, I'm a believer, I know God. God is wondering, eh, eh. so you mean you can believe in me and still worry? You know you can't do both. Maria, you know you can't do both? You choose one. You choose to worry or you choose to believe God. I want to thank God so much for the privilege to be on this journey. I see it as a privilege. I want to thank God. I see it as a privilege of purpose. There are times that your creator makes you tiptoe around him because it's a privilege. But most importantly, I want to thank all the sisters, all the people, visible and invisible. I've had people support me that I've never met in my life. And they are still supporting me. I want to appreciate that. But I want to sit down by saying, we are going to win this. The beast must fall. So I look forward. The journey is difficult, very difficult. But I have hands to squeeze. You finish surgery, you move to the next, to the next, and the next are the bad ones. I have hands to squeeze. That if I call you out of the blues and tell you, so you just come and sit with me at the hospital for one, two, three hours for chemo, and we'll go home, you will do it. But I'm not asking for me. I'm asking for other women around us who are suffering alone in silence. There are many women who can't voice it the way I voice it. There are many women who can't access medical for, oh my God, it's heartbreaking. I didn't know how bad until I jumped into it. I didn't know how bad. Look around for each other. Look around for yourself. First of all, do those tech checks. And don't fear. And if you want references, call me. Tell me at Mildred, which is your doctor? How do I do this? Call me. I, I am I'm, I'm absolutely sure this thing is manageable. Do you know how I know? I'm surrounded by over 10 now women. Survivors. Survivors. They're champs. Marceline. Champ. Please. This is a champ that you've never... There's so many champs here. We have champs. So in leadership, we will try as much as possible to shield our women, not to sink with this thing. Remember, I've said, the two number one, two killers of cancers in, in Kenya are all women. Breast and cervical. And they're still dancing. Why is there a... When they dance BBI tune, can you throw in breast cancer in the BBI tune? That women are dying in these hospitals and they're not prioritizing. You see? So this is my battle. I thank you for the honor of standing before you and for you listening to me. I love you. I love you. <laughs> thank you. I thank you so much. I appreciate today that this is the first day that I'm really stepping out after a, a sense of darkness. It was brief. It was brief. But then, I appreciate that I'm in this space. Halima, I do. I am fine, Halima. Please do not worry. I am fine. Eric, true story. I'm fine. I am. I, Eric doesn't believe me. But I'm fine. I want to urge that we find the cause and the purpose of why we live as women. And when you find it, go for it. Because that is what I'm doing. I love you all and God bless you all. God bless you all.